Okay, well, I think that's us at five o'clock. Um, so I think we'll get started. This session is recorded for everybody. So if you feel you want to go back to it or you want to share it with a colleague or a friend um, after you've come along or let them know that they've been recorded, you can always watch it again at a later date. So hello and a really warm welcome to uh, what is our fourth session for these webinars. This one's on infrastructure and equipment. Uh, my name is Joanna McLean and I'm one of the team members here at Digital Skills Award, um, along with Aoife and Anna, who you'll see um, in the screen here with us. Um, you're all very welcome to this webinar and I really hope that what you hear um, from Alistair and Alexandra tonight is really inspiring and motivating for you because they're two wonderful speakers um, and they've got a lot of information that we're going to share in a very short uh, period of time. So this is only 30 minutes long. We're conscious how valuable your time is. So we really just want to keep this as succinct, um, as informative as possible, and really to try and help you through your um, digital journey. So I'm going to share the screen so that you can see, hopefully, um, what is there. Is that showing up for everybody? It is. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. great. Uh, <laughs> super. Um, so what I'm going to do is, first of all, just take you on um, and just share that this, as I mentioned, is our fourth webinar that we're hosting just now. Um, and what you'll see here is we've got a whole series of webinars that take account of each of the selfie categories, as well as the two additional areas of remote learning and STEAM, um, which are, are really important areas for us to focus on and should integrate into all of the other category areas. So what we're hoping to do with these webinars is really just support you and help you through your journey as you uh, work towards your award. Um, so in the coming months, I, I hope you'll be able to to join us at more of these, share them with colleagues and friends, um, because today what we've got is we've got two amazing uh, guest speakers. So we've got Alexandra Condor, uh, who is a sustainability account manager with HP, one of our partners, um, and she's going to give us some real insights from her world and what she perhaps can give some suggestions and solutions for how you can use your technology in a more sustainable way. I know that's always difficult in schools when you've got a limited budget and things seem to date and, and um, uh, it, it seems to just always be a cycle of having to replace and get more. Um, and we also have um, a very special guest from a school in the west coast of Scotland, Grife High School. We've got Alistair Bannett. And Alistair School um, have actually got several awards. Uh, first of all, they got their Digital Schools Award. And then you'll see here that they also got their Cyber Resilience and Internet Safety Award, their, their Chris. And then last year when they participated in the A Selfie Pot Pilot Programme, um, they were awarded that last summer. And they're now a mentor school for this year's current cohort. Um, and one of the reasons that Greif are here today helping is um, I was the validator for Greif High School and I was really impressed by their journey to continually try and improve their infrastructure for the learners. Um, and hopefully tonight Alistair's going to share his school's journey with you. Um, so without taking up uh, too much time, let me just escape from um, get out of that. That stops sharing now. So uh, before we go any further, uh, Alistair, I believe that you're going to be speaking first this evening and then Alexandra. So I'll mute myself. Um, I'll, I'll give you the, the session so that you can put up your presentation and start speaking. And if anybody has any questions throughout, please just put it in the chat and we can get to it at the end or um, myself, Anna and Aoife are here uh, to help out during this session. Uh, Alistair, thank you so much for joining us tonight and please let us know about your digital journey. Thank you for the, the warm welcome. Um, it's much appreciated. Um, it's great to see so many people on this call as well um, from so many different places. Uh, hopefully we can share a bit of what we're doing here and it's going to be helpful for you um, this evening. Any questions at all, um, please just put them into the chat any way that we can help. We're, we're eager to do that. So hopefully this will be uh, this will be interesting and this will provide something for you. I will apologise for the moustache. Um, it's currently November. Um, 
so there's a, quite a few of the male staff members here are sporting these, so I apologise for that before somebody wonders why why I've got facial hair such as that. So um, I thought a good place to maybe perhaps start would be to to put into context as to where we are. So we, we're a state school um, that's based in Scotland, on the west coast of Scotland, uh, just outside Paisley, if anybody knows where that is. Um, and we have roughly about 950 pupils, give or take. I think just now they're all sitting at around 975. Um, throughout the school, we have uh, different levels of, of infrastructure which people have access to. So we have uh, computer suites. Uh, there's three computer suites um, which are solely available for people to book out. And then we also have computer rooms where um, if they are not being used for a computing class, they're available for people to also book out as well. So th there's a lot of access to several different things which which people can can get. We've also got a selection of Chromebooks as well. Now these, uh, these are, are relatively new. Um, and what we've done is we've built a programme around that, which we'll talk about um, when when it when we come to talking about the Chromebook programme itself. And um, but what we've tried to do with these is target particular pupils. We're in a situation where we don't have control over our um, ICT policy. The council has control over that, and also over funding and and equipment. So what we're doing is we're taking the equipment that we have and we're we're trying to use it best to suit our learners, um, and our our context. Um, so we have a, a quantity of uh, Chromebooks which we use and we use them in a particular way to, to benefit our, our pupils and we'll, we'll talk about how we do this. So um, obviously our journey started with the self-evaluation um, uh, self and as you can see here I've put on the screen our two um, indicators about issues around Wi-Fi and issues around digital equipment and this is this has been going on basically since I arrived six years ago, and that there was always staff wanting to do more, but feeling that they didn't have the equipment to do or the knowledge to use the equipment properly. And I should add that that's a really key point is that the equipment that we do have, we, we feel that we use it very, very well because staff get the access to training, pupils get access to training, and, and we're consistently trying to push that agenda for staff to be using it and building their skills. So as you can see from our um, from our findings here, two of the biggest issues that came about was Wi-Fi and devices. Um, you can see from our second slide here as well um, that the, the school has a bring your own policy device and that's coming off the back of, of our findings here. And we were in the process of drafting that. So we knew that we had a lot to work on and, and how we would approach that was part of our, our action plan. So this was our action plan that we created as part of our selfie award. And what we, we said in that plan was at the point we were going to be a, uh, basically, I don't want to use the word guinea pig, but um, we were basically going to be the council's um, test school for the new pilot super fast Wi-Fi. So straight away, that gave us a lot more opportunities than we had previously had, um, because if you've got equipment you need the infrastructure to match the equipment i mean there's 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 no two ways about that you know you can have all the equipment in the world but if you don't have the wi-fi you don't have the connectivity it's not going to work so we were a pilot school that means that we had access super fast wi-fi which would allow us to use a bring your own device but also supporting um departments and how to use devices as well so that was a bit of a game changer for us um so what we then proceeded to do was draft a, a bring your own device a policy. You can see a snapshot here. If anybody wants this, I'm happy to pass it on and um, that you can use it for, for whatever purpose. Um, and this was to allow classroom staff basically to know where people might use devices in the class, the kind of limitations to it, but also what was acceptable and what was not acceptable so that we had consistency across the school and where it was where devices were being used. So pupils could bring them in, they could use them within the class um, through using Teams or Class Notebook, um, and, and that would allow them that, that flexibility to do that. In addition, every year we always have a staff refresher. And the reason that we do this is, uh, you can see on my shoulder here is a really good example. We have these new Promethean whiteboard, Promethean smart boards. Um, we have several across the school. Um, this year, for example, our staff refresher 
was related to these Promethean whiteboards. We do this every year. We update staff based on what's coming into the school. So, for example, with the Promethean boards, we split up into uh, different groups and we looked at the different features and how people could use that within the classroom. Um, previous years, when we were introducing Microsoft Teams in the school, we used every staff member split up between several different groups, a presenter with each group, and they had to build their own team and work together on their own team in order to understand um, how to use it properly. And that was prior to the introduction of the Chromebooks, so that staff would have an idea of number one, how to use Teams, but also class notebook, which would then relate to them being able to help pupils um, use the equipment that they do have. So the infrastructure is important, but also the skills to go with it was, was really, really important as well um, alongside that. So every year we have that staff refresher. That's really quite important just to bring things back to, to the front brain, essentially. Um, in addition to this, we we were given a number of devices from the council, um, uh, Chromebooks. So we had uh, 60 all in. So obviously we don't have enough to give everybody one. So this is where it comes in that we're, we're, we're trying to use this to benefit our pupils the best way that we can. So now we have access to Wi-Fi in classes. We're able to use these Chromebooks. And we went through a system of um, gathering data on the whole school. So we did a survey and every pupil completed the survey and they told us what they had access to. So in terms of in, in the school, so do they have a phone? Because 93% of kids in Scotland have a phone okay, based on most recent research I've read. However, who doesn't have a phone? Do they have something at home? And also, do they have Wi-Fi at home or do they have access to these things at home? In addition to this, we also look at our RASN needs, so pupils that need uh, specific support. Who's entitled to support and what support do they get? So um, a good example is do they have an ICT entitlement? So they should be using ICT in classes. And what we do is we take we took all that data and you can see the wee image in the right corner there. That was the first section of our, our data looking at what people had or what access people's had to particular devices and from there we just it was done on a microsoft forum and we used that in order to then a filter to see what pupils had access to perhaps maybe only a mobile phone or perhaps only one computer but there's actually four pupils in the house perhaps and from there we, we had to create a threshold as to how we would would put these devices out so we realized that through that any people that, that didn't have a laptop a phone and had an ICT entitlement, we we then pushed to get them a Chromebook at that point that they could use within classes and they could use that to help benefit their learning. So things like uh, speech to text software, things as well like spell checkers, things as well like voiceover PowerPoints, all these things that support pupils in the classroom um, with sp specific needs. So from that, we, we were then able to do that and hand out the, the Chromebooks. What we then start to find, because it, it's based on constant conversations with these pupils, based on constant conversations with staff, is that not all pupils obviously know how to use the technology or the infrastructure that we have got. So we started, we created a period of check-ins. So um, I'm in charge of, of digital learning in the school and I get a period of time which just accounts to like three periods, which is three 50 minute blocks basically in our school. Those three 50 minute blocks, what we did was we organized myself and I have digital ambassadors um, who are some part of our support for learning team. Um, the support for learning principal teacher always jokes with me, they're Vanitz crew, um, but there's three or four of them. And they're great because they're six years, they're advanced higher pupils, advanced higher computing pupils, and they're really interested in digital technology. But on the forefront of that, they've also used this stuff over the past six years in the school. So they have a lived experience of using this within the classroom, which for the best world in the world, I don't have. Um, I can tell you about lots of things and try and support pupils the best way I can, but they, they have a particular lived knowledge of that. So what they do is based on the criteria that we have and I thought I had put it into my slides but unfortunately I don't. We had a criteria that we would use in order to um, 
facilitator check-ins. So our check-ins would go, they'd be kind of 15 minutes. It would be, how are you getting on? Is your device working okay? Have you got any problems? Is there anything we, you should include for, you know, the future? And then they would have a wee mini kind of go through of Teams and class notebook and make sure that was all working okay. And what that meant is at that point is if any people had a Wi-Fi problem in a classroom, for example, we could then log that. Um, and that means that we could actually then start to target particular points and say, well, actually, you know, um, in one particular part of the school, there's three dead points which means this people can't use the device there, so that needs to be checked. So we could start to gather data on that and, and action that quite quickly. In addition to that, it would mean that they could talk through their, their particular ambassador on, on how they were using the technology, and then they could go through, well, actually, if you use Microsoft Word, you can use the camera on the front of your Chromebook to take a photo and then ink on top of it. So the wee things like these start to come about, and it has it carries a, a certain level of um, weight because it's coming from six years and not teachers. So being able to support pupils and using their, their technology in that way is really quite important. Um, as you can see here, I've put another wee image. I've tried to anonymize these, obviously, um, and that's our check-in spreadsheet. So it's got all the pupils in it that have a Chromebook. It ticks off every time we meet them, the day we meet them, the period that we meet them. And I've actually, um, because it was at the same time, I was off all the time. So it was a Tuesday period one and two. I put down what classes they were in Tuesday period one and two, because that never changed. So that made it really, really simple that I could say, right, one of our ambassadors, Joe, and say, Joe, could you go and get this person and this person from that class? And could you do a check in with them, please? And then let me know if there's, there's any issues. So we would collate that data in that way. And then that would give us a basis for reviewing that later on. So we would know if there was any problems, we could see any patterns. Also as well, if people's forgot the Chromebooks, which did happen at various points, for one particular boy, uh, one of the other ambassadors, um, Carly, she would actually drop his Chromebook off for him at the first class in the morning and then pick it up at his last class in the evening and then put it back the next morning, right? So we could, so it was making sure that they had access to these things. So that allowed us to monitor that consistently. So we were get, trying to get the best use of the equipment that we have. We really don't have much, but we want to use the best that we can um, to the best of our abilities to support our pupils. So moving forward, um, we continue to gather that on that, but one of the key things that we did was that we had um, focus groups and these focus groups were made up of pupils who um, were obviously Chromebook users but also other pupils in the school in order to see what they found thought about ICT in the school and also what things they would want to work on and that gave us an overarching kind of view to then put into our development plans for for future years and what we found is actually this has been quite an effective system at keeping pupils engaged and using their Chromebooks we do still have Wi-Fi issues and that does cause problems. And the one thing that I would say in terms of um, of infrastructure is that's the key thing that has to be done first. The access has to be there um, to Wi-Fi and to, to that sort of thing before we maybe move further with equipment because that, that that's the building block of it all. And that, that's definitely the key thing that we've found um, from going from that way. So we're continuing to, to drive that. We've also got um, other equipment that we're now using, which is like our Promethean boards that we're starting to build on. So we, we have a, an ICT group within the school. Um, the way our school works is it's built in teams. And when I say teams, I don't mean Microsoft teams. I mean somebody from each faculty, which makes up the ICT group. And then they take back what we're working on to their faculty and apply it. And so you've basically got many ICT leaders and every faculty is leading that faculty. And one of the things that we're currently training on is our, our new Promethean boards and how to use them in class built on top of our Chromebook usage. So it's been a very positive journey, but we're not we're definitely not at the final stage, that's for sure. We've, we've still got quite a way to go, but I, I feel that we're in the right track so far as we, we are going. I think I think that's the thing, Alistair, isn't it? Nobody is ever quite there. And that was why I thought it would be great to share your journey, because it would be easy to get a school on who is all one to one and they've got all the equipment that you can imagine and they've got full access. But I thought your journey was really 
useful to hear because you don't have um, you know, the, the full access to Wi-Fi, you don't have full access to devices. And I think that's more important for people to hear that there are steps they can take and there's really ingenious and inventive ways that you can actually make the most of what you've got. Um, I loved hearing about Bannett's crew. <laughs> I'm glad you've got them on board helping you. So thank you so much for joining us. And the next session, um, if I just quickly share my screen, uh, the next session is, oh, there we go, uh, 29th of November, which is somebody asked in the chat, uh, the continued, uh, the CPD, Continued Professional Development. Um, so it's only a week's time, a week tonight, we will be having the CPD session uh, with two fantastic guest speakers. Um, so hopefully you can join us then and make it along and um have a fantastic evening and hope that has helped inspire you towards uh, your journey. And as Alistair mentioned, he's got resources there that he can help share um, and he's always open for questions. So if you want to drop him an email um, or ask him anything, he's certainly open to helping. He's a fantastic mentor uh, for our academy schools. So thanks again, Alistair and Alexandra. Sorry about your technical difficulties, but thank you so much for taking the time to join us. And thank you everybody that managed along this evening. Hope to see you next week for the CPD session, which should be fantastic. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. Joanna. Thanks, Alistair and Alexandra. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bye.